these two columns. So I need the column uh, where the, the for the original salaries and the the actual state in Australia, the categorical data. All right. Now, so if we're in stat key, where is ANOVA? Well, it's under advanced randomization tests. I always know when we're getting to the end of our uh, our class when we've gone through almost all of this uh, at one time or another during the class and now we're kind of at the bottom. So here's our ANOVA, ANOVA for difference in means. Um, so that's the one we want. We're comparing mean averages. So we want the ANOVA for difference in means. So we're going to click on that. Now I want to, I want to go ahead and uh, paste my data in. So I'm going to go edit data. Now notice how they have the data here. See how they have it as words, comma, numbers? So they want the, the, the categorical data on the left and the quantitative data on the right. It's always good when you see a new program to look at how they actually want the data. Uh, I'm going to delete out this data that's in there. Again, control A works very nice and delete. <laughs> and now I'm going to paste the state and salary data in there. This data does have a title at the very top, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the title in there. Sometimes you may come across a computer program that just doesn't like the title. Sometimes if they have like a, you know, this dollar sign or different things like that, or sometimes computer programs, you might have to delete out the title. Let's see how this one works. Oh, it looks great. If you notice, they actually calculated the F-test statistic. It's under original sample, and it's right here. If you notice, 7.922, that's the same... Um, F test statistic that Stat Cato calculated just a second ago. If you want to know the specifics, you can click ANOVA table, and there's that sum of squares and the variance between and the variance within that we were just talking about. Here's the degrees of freedom and the sum of squares. Again, where it says groups, that's the between, and where it says error, that's the within. Okay, so it's, you can get the same, same printout if you're interested. Now, again, the key is though, how would I get the critical value, right? How would I know if this fell in the tail or not? There's actually a couple ways. I could actually look up the theoretical critical value from the F distribution curve in stack, uh, in stack um, key. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and use simulation and I'll show you how to look up that, that critical value F, um, critical value in a second. So simulation, again, works really well. Remember, a simulation is simulating the null hypothesis. The computer assumes this null hypothesis is true, and it starts um, taking random samples uh, that from this, po uh, assuming that this population was true. So assuming the null hypothesis was true, what kinds of random samples would we be likely to see? So if I generate a few thousand random samples, ooh, look at the shape. The F distribution actually looks very skewed to the right in general. It tends to be a non-normal, um, non-normal. If you remember, it's based on variances. Variances are squared numbers added up. Notice this never drops below zero. We're dividing two variances, which means the answer can never be negative. Um, so if you notice, the, the sample... Um, the samples are all above zero. Now, what are these samples? Well, these are actually F-test statistics. You can see down here, each random sample is actually, they're, they're basically taking random samples and calculating F-test statistics 3,000 times. So they took 3,000 random samples, all of the same size as my original sample, and calculated 3,000 uh, F-test statistics. The one thing about this is interesting is you see the shape. The F distribution curve, the theoretical curve that was used long before computers were invented, um, actually does have this same sort of skewed shape to it. Um, it does change uh, depending on your degrees of freedom, but it's not a normal um, distribution by any means. Now what we said was ANOVA was always a right tail test, right? So if I click right tail, well, there, and I, I think we were using a 5% significance level, so I want to put 0 0.05 in the tail. Okay, 0 0.05 in the tail. There we go. 
and there's our sort of critical value. This is actually a, 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 an estimate of the critical value right there. So the critical value is 2.43, not too far off from what Stat Cato got. Now the question is, is my original sample F, since it's simulating thousands of F test statistics, we're actually going to compare the F test statistic to this. So in other words, we're going very old school and kind of comparing the actual F test statistic to uh, the simulation. I shouldn't say it's old school. This is actually very cool. So, um, so 7.922 is way over here in the tail, right? It's way out here. So it's definitely in the right tail, so it's definitely significant. Now what about the p-value? What would be the p-value? Well this is not the p-value, that's the significance level, 0 0.05. So the p-value is the probability that this original sample happened. Well how do I sort of summarize all of that data? Well the easiest way is with the test statistic itself. So what they're going to do now is put the F test statistic in this bottom box barn here, 7.922, and you'll get an approximate p-value. And we get it zero, right? Very, and again, we remember the stat Cato one was written in scientific notation, but it was very, very close to zero. So we got a zero p-value. Okay, so this is how you do simulation a randomized simulation for an, a one-way ANOVA test. Now if you did want to look up the theoretical, right, the theoretical um, critical value on ANOVA, you, some, some computer programs actually do not give you the critical value. Um, you could look it up in StatKey. Let me show you. Um, so if you remember under theoretical distributions you can look up critical values. In fact we've looked up critical values in the past for, for the z-score, the t-score, and chi-squared. Remember normal was the z-score. And then here's f. So now f is going to ask you two things. It's going to ask you for the numerator degrees of freedom and the denominator degrees of freedom. So think remember the numerator is the between, right? We had five groups so the, de the degrees of freedom between would have been four. The degrees of freedom within, I think we already talked about it, was 170, right? Because the total degrees of freedom was 174. So one way you can get the degrees of freedom um, within is actually just take your total degrees of freedom minus your um, degrees of freedom for the number of groups between, and then you get your this one. Alright, so if I just push OK, now this is the theoretical curve that's so supposed to match that sampling distribution we just looked at a second ago and if you notice it does match it pretty well. Now all I'm going to do is click right tail and just like I was doing with the simulation I go put 0 0.05 and there's the exact critical value that Stat Cato got. So Stat Cato again is using the theoretical curve while Stat Key is actually using randomized simulation or ran a randomization technique. Okay, so that's ANOVA. So just give you a quick example of how to run an ANOVA through these programs. Um, I hope it was helpful. Again, this is Intro Stats with Matt Touchot. And uh, I will see you next time.